Hey, party people! Welcome to Stand Up and Stand Out. I'm your host, Nikki Green. Stand Up and Stand Out, it's more than a podcast, it's a call to action. And no, I don't mean in that cutesy CTA acronym buzzword type of way. Are you tired of misogynistic bosses ruining your workday? Did you dream of using your creative energy for good instead of promoting corporate greed and evil? then this educational podcast is for you. Following nearly two decades of working in Fortune 500 companies, I wanna share my leadership learnings with all of you. Leaders are needed in all walks of life, not just business. We are in a critical time to pivot ourselves and the community around us to build a better future together. In this podcast, we're gonna cover some behind the scenes from my new book, I Laugh in the Face of Danger and other life lessons that should have taught me better. <laughs> Stand Up and Stand Out is education, comedy, and therapy all in one. See you there. Welcome, everybody. I am so excited to introduce our guest on the Stand Up and Stand Out podcast. Aisat Abuligan is an engaging communicator and an expert at helping students prepare for life after high school. Her desire is to equip the next generation for financial success. She's author of the book and curriculum, Finance, My Freedom, and My Future. Aisat has served various industries, including commercial real estate, medical, automobile, and financial services during her 20-year career in finance and accounting. She combines her love for numbers and her love for teaching and motivating when she speaks. She is a mom of two who knows she's married up. Aisa and her family live in Dallas, Texas. Aisa Bulligan is thoughtful and easy to work with. She's a leader and an encourager, and we're very fortunate to have her here today. Hi, Aisa. How are you? Hi, Nikki. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. We'll kick off with our interview questions, get to know you a little bit about what you're up to and where have you been. And so let's start with where you've been with what's your origin story. Every great superhero and villain has one. What is yours? <laughs> so I am a New Yorker at heart and I've always been. However, I grew up in Nigeria. So when people ask me, where's your accent from? Oh, oh actually people ask me, where are you from? And I go, New York. Like, <laughs> where's your accent from? <laughs> Nigeria, because that's where I spent most of my early years before returning back to the state. And like every good Texan, I got here as soon as I could. I love that. You've had obviously a very interesting life. So what makes you unique and what makes you stand out? Nikki, I believe every single person is uniquely created. And so there can never be two of you, even if you're a twin. True. I, I would say what makes me super unique right now is the fact that I love equipping students for financial success. And I know there are so many other people doing something in the educational realm, but my passion really is just to see the next generation thrive beyond what previous generations have done financially. We've been through a pandemic and so many countries are gonna leave a lot of debt to the next generation. So I feel like I'm in the right time to prepare them to handle what we're gonna leave behind in a better way and do it successfully. First by doing it personally, and then as a community having that effect that would have everyone not only succeed personally, but actually make a better and greater nation. That's really powerful because you think about that too. I, I think often we're so stressed about our own finances. And I know here in the States, many people have been fortunate to get some of their relief, but there is the next side of that, which is debt to our nation and probably is happening around the world. So I think it's good for them to balance both of those things things is first take care of yourself, but then make sure we're getting back on track overall globally. That's fantastic. You've done a lot of things in your career. So why don't you talk to us a little bit about what careers you've explored? We have a lot of young people in our audience who are still trying to figure out what they're doing. And so before they have money to spend <laughs> or money to save, we need to figure out what job they're going to get when they come out of school. So let's talk about you. I started out in accounting. I actually made a decision to be an accountant when I was 12 years old. Now that sounds really great. And ooh, I had clarity as a young age. No, I just had an uncle to look up to. He was a great accountant. He was always happy. And I thought, wow, this is a great profession to go into. And my BFF and I decided we wanted to do the same thing. And we both came up with accounting. <laughs> and that's how, <laughs> that's how I started out. I pursued the same career without any influence from anybody whatsoever, without even introspectively looking at myself to see what do I like? Do I still like this? It just seemed like the right thing to do. And I went for it. Fast forward years later, graduation in the profession, like every fresh professional out there, I was so green and I had my eyes set out on becoming a partner at the first firm that I joined. 
Wow. And I was very ambitious. But I realized that was really not my goal. I wanted more than just somebody who loved numbers. And if you've ever heard me speak, you know that I love numbers. If you've worked with me, I love numbers. It's just one of those things that makes sense. So I pursued accounting. I did, you know, tax consulting for a while. And as I grew older and matured, I realized that there was something still nagging at me. And that's when I thought I never really had an input on my career. I love accounting, but I'm not completely passionate about it. I am actually more passionate about teaching and imparting knowledge to others. And I realized I'd volunteered for so many years, as long as I've been in my profession, I volunteered teach to teach <laughs> at some capacity. So Several years into accounting, two decades later, I left my corporate hat, even though I'd worked in several industries, still doing accounting, still being in the finance world. I'd explored several industries, but I decided I needed to go back to my true passion, what I was called to do, which is help the younger generation do better. And what better way than to apply the skills that I had with the talent that I have, which is teaching and imparting knowledge with my background of accounting and both of them just married so well. And that's how I became a financial coach and speaker. So today I speak all over the country at conferences and at schools, equipping students with financial skills. And I love when the light bulb comes on. I love when they say, wow, you make this difficult concept so easy to understand. And those things, comments like that just warm my heart. And I've heard students say, I've never thought about it this way. And they just love that I am able to give them a perspective in finance that's not cold and numbers. It's fresh, it's engaging, it's exciting, and very practical. I never leave a conference without giving them practical things that they can use right away. And that's just been a joy for me and a privilege to finally just marry my skills, my desire with my calling and with my talent. I think there was this mentality and I know a lot of people still have it. They have this really bad relationship with money and there's concept like, oh, unless I, I go make partner, I do some super extreme job. That's the only way I'm going to be rich or be comfortable enough with money. And that's not true. I was very fortunate that my stepdad taught me a lot about money very, very early. He didn't make a ton of money. My family didn't make a lot, but they were able to save for a house. They're now buying their third house in their life. And that would seem unrealistic to a lot of people, especially they live in the California Bay Area. It's not a cheap place. And learning those skills young is so important to have those really important baselines so that you save first, you invest first, right? And then you don't spend until you have, or you have a plan. And I think those are such critical building blocks. It's funny you talk about being an accountant because in my early days, I was a financial analyst. I did lots and lots of very complex Excel models, but then I moved into management and I didn't touch it again. And one day I was in a meeting with my team and I just took over control of the Excel and I started doing stuff. They're like, oh, you know how to do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't just give me the job of manager because I have a nice laugh or something and a good smile. I, I did know how to do this. Well, maybe I'll, we'll teach some Excel classes together, maybe on a future. I would be delighted. <laughs> It sounds like you know, you're starting to pursue your passion. What else is going on in your life? There's always so many exciting things happening, but how are you currently pursuing your passion, especially in the midst of the pandemic where things are a little bit virtual and definitely tough to travel? I love that question. What else is going on? There's so many things going on, especially in the midst of a pandemic. So when April 13th, we shut down in Texas and April 14th at an event, I felt like the whole world was over especially since I was fairly new in the speaking world. And I just thought, this is it. It's over. It's done. However, I learned pretty quickly that it wasn't over. It was just reinventing itself. And so over the last year, I've actually done more speaking than I did the year before that. <laughs> the best part is I could go to Ohio and Colorado and end up in Texas within three days doing three conferences, which I would <laughs> Never had done pre-pandemic. Yeah, it's sort of a blessing a little bit without the travel in there. One, it's less cost, so we can do more events. But two, you miss the jet lag and the terrible food. <laughs> Absolutely. And I love sleeping in my bed. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> One of the things that I'm really excited about, April 29th, I have a budgeting workshop, 30 minutes. And last year was the first time I did it online. It was really a gift to high school seniors who are graduating and going off to college. Just my way of giving back to the community to say, hey, I'd love to equip you with some skills as you go to be independent. The feedback was phenomenal. And this year, I've had students asking me, could you open it up to high school students? And I'm in college. Could I come take? I even had a mom on Facebook email me go, I'm not a student, but could I come to your event? And I'm like, sure. <laughs> I'm super excited about that because that's become an annual event. And now a way that I, I get to give back to my community and beyond. And this year, we actually have students enrolled from various states. And I have another student who is international enrolled. And that just got me super excited. The word is going out. But that's not the only thing I'm excited about. In July, we have a four-day conference for students here and abroad who want to join. And it's a leadership and success conference only for students. And the cool part is we hope to be able to award some students some college scholarship money. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, a, it's a collaborative event, and I am just stoked about that right now. And that's really win-win. Go and gain some more skills, but you may also get a bonus in the process. We'll put some information on my website as well. We'll redirect people over to yours so that they can learn more about it and hopefully get some more people registered. I'm joining a new board. I'll be announcing some of that stuff soon, but it's another organization that's trying to help young people through different times in their lives. So I know this will be really beneficial to many of those young ladies. We would love to have as many people as possible. Now the April 29th event is free. However, the four day conference is not, it's paid, but you would get so much more than what you're paying for. And as I share this exciting news and all the highlights of my life, I really don't want to do your audience a disservice. I want to be very transparent. Even though I made up my mind at age 12 that I wanted to be an accountant, I really did not start out being very wise with money. As you know, our culture teaches us to be professional spenders. <laughs> <laughs> that it does. And for me, I just joined suit. And for a while, I did good. But as I made my money, especially as I, when I graduated and my salary doubled, you would think that I'd had this good background coming up. And so I should just continue that. No, I did what I thought was the American dream. <laughs> yes. yes. And your and spend was, goes up to your income. That's what happens every time. And this was a derail for me because I had actually been saving as a student. And then my salary doubles. I got myself a luxury apartment. I got myself a new car. I had never had a car payment. I had never had a car note before that. And my expenses were actually 100% of what I made. And I'm ashamed to say this, but that's what it was. And it took me a few years and going back to my roots and learning again about budgeting, actually learning for the first time budgeting. I was a natural saver. I don't know how that happened, but somehow missed the boat and I had to get on this budgeting boat. And that was where I started to see change. And I realized regardless of what you make, that doesn't really matter. It's what you tell your money to do that matters. And I realized I could leave on less than what I was making. And so today when I teach students, I teach them from the mistakes I've made. And I am still learning. We all know that just because you're on the platform doesn't mean that you're made. It just means that you can share your story and you can help somebody else and you can fall if you don't watch it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's what makes you more passionate. It's very easy if you're just up in the castle and you're perfect and pristine and nothing ever bad happens because you had this amazing foresight and you fixed everything in your life. That's not reality. Like most of us, especially those of us that are speakers, we're talking from experience and we're really trying to share it. And I think that's powerful. Like even with the right foundation, you get caught up in it that all of a sudden I do need to have the nicer house, the nicer car, the nicer clothes, all of it. And then your expenses just grow with your income. And that's why having those really basic ideas and setting aside for the future, it's really so important. So that's fantastic. I love that story. <laughs>
And then to finish us off, what makes you stand up? How do you use your superpowers for good and what causes has affected your life that you want to improve for future generations? Like I shared earlier, one of the things that impacted my life was just the fact that I got to a rock bottom of making so much money and having nothing such that I even needed a surgery and I couldn't afford it because I wasn't handling my money properly. Now, what wakes me up every morning? The fact that I can make a difference and it doesn't have to be a huge difference. I wake up every day thinking, who needs me today? Who can I show up for today? And sometimes that's a student in one of my finance clubs. Sometimes it's my kids. Sometimes it's a student who heard my speech and said, please send me a budgeting worksheet I want to learn. Other times it's a student who goes, wow, I can start my own business or I can invest. And I'll share this short story with you. Last year, I taught an entrepreneurship workshop online for four days and I had students all over Texas, I believe about three to four different cities show up. Later on that I think about a few weeks later, two of the students from my class went into their community. They decided to apply what they learned and they had an event where they had other kids doing something to raise funds. So some of them cooked, some of them made different things. And they had this one day event where parents came, shopped and different people in the community shop. They raised a thousand and $500 wow. for a children's nonprofit organization. Wow. And one of the moms, she sent me a text and said, you've got to check this out. Thank you. You had an impact in this. And so when I wake up every morning, I ask myself a question, who needs me today? And sometimes that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Very important too. I do really love that because I think this is the joy of having this type of job of, yes, I'm doing something that I'm passionate about, but you don't really always know how you're impacting the audience. Sometimes there is that one-on-one, -on -one, hey, yes, this helped me do my budget, but seeing them really take those lessons and then continue to pay it forward immediately. Like they didn't wait and have to sit on it and make a grand plan. They're really action oriented. And I think that's a really great thing about this next generation generation. And I'm really glad that that's your target audience to really help kids when they're younger. Let's not wait until we're older and we've already made mistakes. Although again, even if the mom calls, <laughs> we're picking up the phone, right? We're still going to yes. help whoever needs help because the basics are still the same, but the sooner we can help people set a good foundation, the better off they're going to be for the rest of their journey. Thank you so much for coming to join us today at greenchameleoncollective.com forward slash podcast. We'll have a whole page linking to all the wonderful events and activities that Issa is up to and a links to her website so that you guys can check out more and book her to speak at your next event. Thank you. <laughs> can I add <laughs> one thing? Absolutely. Bring it. What people can do on my website, I want to be very clear. Friends can go on their web on my website and sign up their kids for any of my events that are open to the public. Schools can go and invite me to either start a finance club with them or use my curriculum as part of their teaching curriculums or clubs. And right now we're working on an initiative to do a financial leadership club where students all over, if their school does not have a leadership club or a finance club, they can join with other kids all around the nation and be a finance club. And what they would get is lots of fun activities, learning a lot, and they will be equipped such that by the time they leave the club, they are equipped, they are confident that they are set for financial success. I love that. And that's such a great way of provide services to schools that maybe they can't do them themselves on site, even when when they go back in session, now we continue to do virtual and connect people all over the country and all over the world. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thanks for joining us today and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to follow us wherever the cool kids hang out that do podcasts, Spotify, Google, Apple, and you can also subscribe to Nikki Green's YouTube channel to see the video versions of each show plus additional bonus content. You know it's all about the gram, so you can follow us on social media on Instagram as well as Twitter and Facebook at Green Chameleon Collective. And if you're on TikTok, you don't stop. You can find us at Nikki Green 678. Thanks again, guys, and can't wait to see you next time. Bye.